guys did a good job. I'm going to tell you a story this morning about an old man. When I was a kid. Yeah. Well, when you were children, old men could be, you know, one yeah. yeah. Now, he was probably in his uh, early 60s. Early to mid 60s. Well, I, I was probably nine. But he lived in his house, and, and he didn't cut his grass, and he didn't pick up any of the garbage outside. And so at first we didn't think anybody lived in it. And then all my friends told me that house was haunted and not to go near that house. But every once in a while you would see him come out. Um, like I said, he was probably in his early 60s, but he looked like he was in his 80s. He didn't talk to nobody and he wasn't a nice man. Well, for us little kids, he didn't seem to be like a nice man because if he was outside and we came too close to his front fence, he would yell at us to get away from his property. Okay. And I always wondered why he was so grumpy. Um, no, I'm going to tell you why. Okay. So I always wondered why he was grumpy. And, you know, being little kids and being inquisitive, I used to go to his fence just to see if I could make him yell at me. <laughs> so I wanted to see him. Because all the other kids used to tell me all kinds of strange things about this man. So, one day, I saw him outside, and he was in his front yard, so I ran over there to his fence. And he turned around and yelled at me, and I didn't move. He told me to get away from his yard, get away from his property. And I was trying to get up the courage to ask him why he was so mean. But I couldn't figure out a way to say it that sounded nice. But, being a kid... I got my courage up and I asked him, I said, sir, why don't you like us? He goes, like who? I go, us, little kids. He goes, not that I don't like you. He goes, but you guys keep throwing all this trash in my yard. Which is why he wouldn't pick it up. And I told him, I said, sir, I, I, I don't throw any trash in your yard. And I was just wanting to talk to you because all the other little kids say you're mean. And uh, he, he kind of looked at me and, you know, little kids say what's on their mouth. And I told him. And he goes, well, he goes, I like kids. I like quiet kids. I like kids that don't come near my fence. <laughs> and I go, sir, I'm not a quiet kid because my mommy tells me that I'm not quiet at all. But I like old people. And I was wondering if, if you want to be friends. And he looked at me and just looked at me. He goes, why do you want to be my friend? I go, well, maybe you'll stop yelling at me. That's one of the reasons. But I asked, I said, do you have any children? And I could see his eyes start to wake And he didn't say nothing for what seemed like forever. Like five years. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. <laughs> then he looked and he goes, he goes, well, he goes, I, I had a son. And he goes, I love my son. And I asked him, I said, well, what happened to your son? Is he, is he around here? Does he live around here? Now, this was back in the 1960s. So, you guys remember what was taking place in the 1960s? Okay. So, he told me, he goes, his son died in the morning. And he goes, him and his wife. Now, one of the things you got to watch out for, because when you start to ask people about what bothers them, if they actually open up to you, they may really open up to you. But he told me, he goes, his wife and him and his son, that was their family. His son was drafted and went to war and never came home. He said one day they got a letter that stated what happened. And it broke his wife's heart. And she lived for probably another, let me say, I think less than half a year, which is six months. She was healthy, but she died. You know why she died? Heartbroken. She was heartbroken. She just she couldn't she couldn't fathom losing her son. And it just broke her heart and she lost her will to live. And that was one of the reasons why the old man didn't talk to a lot of people, why he didn't like people bothering his house, uh, and he didn't like to talk with the children. But I was really surprised because what do you say? You know, saying your kid, what do you say after that? So I just looked at him and, and I said, Sir, I'm really sorry, but I would really like to be your friend. 
And again, he looked at me and he just shook his head. And I thought he was going to turn around and walk in his house. But he looked at me and he says, will you come back and talk to me tomorrow? I said, yes. But I asked him, are you going to yell at me if I come up to the fence? He goes, no. I go, well, listen, if you don't yell at me, I'll come up and I'll talk to you. I said, can I bring my friends? He goes, no, I don't know. I'll talk to you. But that's it. Because he didn't know what the other kids would do. Because like I said, he had kind of a reputation. But I would talk to him. And he turned out to actually be a really nice man. He just had a lot of pain from losing his son and losing his wife. So as you grow up and you start to meet people, you see people in church, you see people like me that are old, you see people in here that are older than me, right? There are a lot of... I'm not that old. I like, I like this kid. I like it. You raised a good one. So listen, so, so listen. When, you're, when you're talking to us, and you're talking to some of us that are older, and sometimes we may seem grouchy, Sometimes we may seem mean, but you have to realize is there are things that we go through. Uh, pain. Sometimes we don't hear so well. But one of the things we always like is we like little kids. And we like when you actually acknowledge that we're here and you talk to us. Don't be afraid of us. Okay? Spend time with us because it helps us to remember what it was like when we were your age. And if you take the time, we've got a lot of good stories to tell you. Okay? Back to your seats. Mm -hmm.